Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. This is Dr. Erica, I'm so excited you're here with us today. And we are gonna learn about Tinkercad circuits. So we have a lot of Tinkercad videos up now and we are gonna check out their new circuits. So go to tinkertackcad.com and sign on in to your Tinkercad. And once you're in there, you'll notice on the left-hand side, there's all these different things that you can do. So you can do your 3D designs like we've done before. We're gonna check out the circuits. We have lots of code block videos um, up online that you can check out. And if you're a patron of ours, we do print out the, the flat 3D printable things. And we've even made some that fold into 3D objects. So for today, you're gonna click on circuits and that will bring you to a page you probably won't have very much in the way of circuits there and you will click create new circuit and as this is our first video we're just going to sort of get used to all of the different things here so you might want to rename your circuit you can click up here this is going to be a simple led circuit all right we're not going to do too much special as we check out the things and over here is our circuit components you can either do the basic circuit components or all of the circuit components. We're gonna start with the basic for a lot of stuff. And what's great here is that you can add things and then we can start a simulation up here. And you can even use Arduino Unos and you can add code over here, which is amazing. And you'll notice in our basic circuit elements, we have what truly is basic. We have resistors and LEDs, we have buttons. Potentiometers, these are changeable resistors, so you can change how big your resistor is. Capacitors that can store or release some charge. Different types of switches, so we have the push button and the slide switch. We have a nine volt battery. We have a coin cell battery. We've got a one and a half volt battery. These are great because if you put a nine volt battery on an LED, that's too much for the LED, so you could use a coin cell instead. And you can also sort of build these circuits with parts that you're going to use, which is ideal. We have breadboards, and breadboards is what we use to start off circuits building and see what things look like before we either print a PCB board to make it look more like a chip and more professional, or before we solder the parts together. It's sort of a way to test things. You've got some controllers and some motors down here. We even have... Um, red, green, blue LEDs, you have transistors and diodes, photoresistors if you want to do something like turn something on when it's dark or turn something on when it's light. You can do those things with that. We have sensors, so this is kind of amazing. Now today we're just going to make a simple LED circuit just to get used to how these things work and then you can check out the rest of our series for some more complicated circuits. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go over here to the breadboard and if you click on it and you hold your mouse down, then you can bring the breadboard over and it will bring it up here. And you'll notice as I hover over any of these dots, there's a set of other dots that are green that all show up together. And I do the same thing down here. Up here, they actually go horizontally instead of vertically. And this is showing us what pins are connected on our breadboard. So if I plug something into this hole, which we could call 3J, if I plug something into 3I, those two items would be connected. It would be like I was soldering them together. But if I don't want them to be connected, I could plug it in over here in four, and then they wouldn't be connected. So that kind of is really cool. So that's how breadboards work. They are vertically attached here up until this gap this is called a break in it and then they are vertically attached below that gap and then here is our what we call our power rails and those ones are all attached so if i plug something in here the hole all the way over here is also attached so if i put a battery on this any of these holes i can plug into to get that battery we're going to do a simple circuit so for this we need our breadboard to build on we're going to grab a coin cell battery out and then we also need an LED. And so we can grab that out too. And so right now, nothing is attached. You'll notice my LED doesn't go on. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach my power. So I'm gonna move my LED over a little bit. And if I come up, you'll notice there's these sort of two terminals on that coin cell battery. And when I click over one of them, it says positive and it gets that nice red square and what I can do is I can right or left click on that just a normal mouse click and I can come up I'm gonna attach this over here 
into this red thing. Now I could attach it like that if I wanted to, or I can make it look a little prettier by clicking, going straight up to where I want to start to go right, and I can click down and that puts like a little pin in there, and I can do that. And then here you have this piece that you can now move it around. This is not necessarily useful today, but it becomes useful when we get circuits that are more tricky. Now, this is a green wire and it's my positive lead, which is typically red. And what I can do is I can right click on this. Oops, nope, not right click. They've changed it a little bit. I can come up here and I can choose my wire color up here. So I could choose that it's a red wire, which is really cool. They also, this is very new, have all these different wire types. So you could have a normal wire that we're building a breadboard with. You could have an alligator clip, which is kind of amazing. They've really been improving this over the past couple years. Now I'm gonna come down here to my negative terminal and I'm gonna connect it up to this negative terminal here. So I can come down and I'll click going down a couple places so that it sort of looks pretty with my wires, just like this. And I can bring this down if I'd like to, just like that. Now, of course, I don't want this one to be red because that would be really confusing. I wouldn't know which one's ground and which one's positive. So I'm gonna turn this color black. Again, I'm gonna come up here in this upper left-hand corner and I will choose my wire color is black. Beautiful. All right, so now I can come in and I can plug my LED in. You'll notice that as I do this, the legs automatically come into the two breadboard holes. So now all I need, oops, you can hit escape if you get a wire that comes up there. I just need to connect the right wires to these guys. Now, LEDs are one-way streets, so you want to make sure that you connect the red to the long leg of the LED, which is called the anode, and it's also the leg that kind of comes off diagonally here. And so I'm coming on here and I can just click on this dot over to there. Now, now I have the red, which is attached to my battery, which is coming down here and going into that guy. I'm gonna change this wire to red also, so it's not as confusing. I kind of can see the flow of it. And I can do the same over here with the black wire, and that will be the ground, and I can put the black wire there. This is exactly how I would wire it up on a breadboard. And what's great about Tinkercad circuits is you can come over here in the upper right-hand corner, and you can say start simulation, and it will start it for you. Now you see my LED comes on, and it says, oh no, there's a little exclamation point, and it says that the current through my LED is too much. So, we often run our LEDs with coin cell batteries without resistors in them, but we certainly can add a resistor in there to make this program a little happier. And to build anything else in the circuit, you have to make sure you hit this stop simulation. That can be really frustrating. All right, so if we wanted to, we could add a resistor in here. So I'm gonna delete these items. In fact, I could just add, well, let's delete this one. I'm gonna delete my black. And I can take my resistor and I can put it across just like that. So it's gonna act as the wire and I can come over here and I can start my simulation and you'll notice that my LED is not as bright, but it doesn't have that little exclamation point that I might hurt my LED. Now, if you're saying, oh, I want a resistor, but I want a really big one or I want a really small one, if you click on that resistor, you have this piece that comes up in the upper right-hand corner, you could give it a name which is helpful if you're building, you know, sort of big circuits, you could call this the LED resistor. And then later on, you'll know where it's at and you can give it a resistance. So you can choose either giga ohms, mega ohms, kilo ohms, regular ohms, milli ohms, and it keeps going down. So you can have all these options. And you'll notice that if I have one ohm, it's really, really bright. And I could put a hundred ohms there and it's less bright, but it's no longer a problem. And I, if I put a giga ohm there, ooh, it doesn't really even light up. And this is a great thing you can do if you wanna build a circuit and you're testing things and you're not sure what you need to use as parts, you can always build it on this board. Alrighty, thank you so much for joining us on this really simple LED circuit as we build them. We will have some other Tinkercad circuit projects going as we learn how to use the other parts in here. If you loved this video and you're having fun with us, please make sure you check us out at patreon.com slash rosyresearch, and we will see you soon. Bye, friends.